Hi, I'm Alan, and today we're going to be doing a different kind of video. We have a good amount of books that I haven't read, and we're going to be tier ranking them. Now, I need to have a word with some of you elitists who spend 18 hours every single day in your f ivory tower looking down on us mortals who actually have things to do rather than to just read books. I haven't read all of these and to be honest I haven't read most of these books and so I'm not gonna be t-ranking them. I know, shocking, I haven't read Emma by Jane Austen or Little Woman or something like that. No, I haven't read those books and I'm still technically a teenager. I've actually started reading novels when I was 17 years old so give me a break, okay? And by the way I forgot to mention spoilers ahead for every single book here that I'm gonna be ranking at least. The first book is 1984 by George Orwell. This was the first novel that I actually read and it was a good one. In my opinion, this is the book that made me fall in love with literature. It already has that good rating, but it's also a good book itself. If you're not aware, 1984 is a dystopian novel about this guy, Winston Smith, and his life in this deeply totalitarian state that sees everything. Even if you haven't read it, you most likely heard of it. So definitely it's going in the S tier. Uh, the death of Ivan Illich. It's a classic story and it's also written by Tolstoy, which is Tolstoy has this funny way of writing his stories and that his stories are usually extremely long. I mean, Anna Karenina itself has a thousand pages and War and Peace, which is a book that I've actually finished today, has 1200 pages. So Tolstoy and a short story doesn't seem like a good combination. I'd say it's a perfect short story to read if you don't really like reading books themselves. It is sometimes difficult to just keep on reading and keep on reading. So you do need those short stories once in a while. And the story itself is also very good. It tells us about this bureaucratic judge who has lived a very mediocre life and who's also lived for the approval of other people. And eventually he gets diagnosed with this illness. They don't really know what caused that illness, but they do know that he's going to die in the next few weeks to few months. You can just see the downfall of Ivan Illich. And the monologues in this book are incredible, in my opinion. So, A tier. Oh, Anna Karenina, she's a bit bro. Stranger by Albert Camus. <sighs> when I first heard about this book, the primary concept of it, I didn't like it at all. So when you try to explain the concept of the absurd to an average 17 year old, he does not care. And so I didn't really like this book at the time. I get the whole absurd concept, but ah, B or C, we'll put it in uh, C tier because the novel itself is just mediocre at best in my opinion. Okay, Crime and Punishment. We can talk about Dostoevsky now. Let's go. Crime and Punishment is a book that I'll read 100 times throughout my lifetime. And I'm definitely sure of that because I've read it twice already in the span of one year. Crime and Punishment is about Raskolnikov, a 21-year-old student who's living in impoverished St. Petersburg. Obviously, the city does have rich people. He lives in this tiny, small apartment, and the whole premise of it all is he eventually does this crime. He kills a old pawnbroker woman who's rich. Overall, she's not really a moral person per se, and also, from the utilitarian point of view, killing her would make sense. If you kill her, you can distribute her money. And so Raskolnikov decides to do it. And you can just see it. The downfall of a murderer. That's what crime and punishment is about. I'll put it in A tier for now because I have a better book than this one by Dostoevsky as well. Animal Farm by George Orwell. It's not exactly at the level of 1984, but it's a solid book. I mean, <laughs> Orwell really hated Stalin and this book shows it more than anything else that he's written. So Animal Farm, so far it's, ah, it's B tier. The Idiot, the best book I've read so far by Dostoevsky, The Idiot talks about Prince Yov Nikolaevich Mishkin. 
an epileptic man who's just come from Switzerland and he's going into noble Russian society and also how to live a good moral life. That's what The Idiot is about. And honestly, it may be my favorite novel to date, but I'm not really sure. Brave New World. The ending of this book doesn't make sense at all. It's almost like the contrary to 1984. So in 1984, you had no freedom. In this, you have all the freedom you want to consume as many drugs as possible. And also humans are born in labs and there are hierarchies. Nobody really wants to be the other hierarchy. Everybody is satisfied with their current life. That's what Brave New World is about. And also it has promiscuous woman, which is, in my opinion, already as tier. But jokes aside, uh... yeah, it's a tier. The ending itself doesn't make sense. We're left with the final five. We have the picture of Dorian Gray, the trial metamorphosis. War and Peace and Notes from the Underground. I don't know why there aren't more uh, Dostoevsky books on here, but it's no big deal. <sighs> Man, Dostoevsky is such a good author. <laughs> the Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Here's a quick story about this book, how I actually bought it. I was in Italy with my school. We were on a school trip, right? After two or three days, I was just sick of it all. I mean... In the sense of, I just want to sleep, bro. I'm tired of these constant parties. I didn't go to that many parties, don't worry. I wanted to get some good quality sleep. And so this one day, it was the third night of the actual school trip. It was five nights total. And so by the third night of sleep deprivation, I was just sick of it all. I remember reading it and being absorbed in the story. The story itself is amazing, by the way. But here I was, page through page, through page, enjoying the book. I finish, I go, <laughs> I lie down to sleep, and I just see my friend bring this party of 20 people into my room. <laughs> I have felt God's wrath. And so the book itself, it's amazing. I've read it in a very short time period. That's my advice for you, by the way. Don't read... Don't try to speed run good books. That's all I'm going to say here. So the picture of Dorian Gray as dear, in my opinion, The Trial by Franz Kafka. I have mixed opinions about this book. I didn't really like it at first, but then the bigger picture started to emerge and I actually got it. So The Trial by Franz Kafka. It's about this man who's not even falsely accused of a crime, but he's accused and arrested of a crime that he himself did not commit. Here's the thing with a lot of these classic novels. All of them have this one or multiple lessons inside of them. Like at the end of the book, they say, okay, Raskolnikov did this. Murder is wrong. You shouldn't be nihilistic. This is what happens to you when you're a nihilist. But with Kafka's trial, the lesson behind it is, don't trust the laws. It takes a lot of deep thinking to actually get this book. So I'm not going to judge it based on the fact that I didn't really understand it. Okay, I'll say B tier. I think that's fair. Metamorphosis was just weird, bro. It was okay. I get the picture of it all, but it was just weird. I don't like I don't like this book, to be honest. War and Peace. As I've said, I finished this book today and a lot of the <laughs> things that I've actually read, I don't remember. If you try to tell me that I've read this book that has 1,200 pages in it, I'd be like, okay, what's the lesson behind it? And there are multiple lessons. Here, I cannot give you a central theme because you have so many characters and so many events and so many descriptions, narrations, philosophical motives, everything. I'm just going to say, watch the video by Codex Cantina down below. They made an incredible summary of War and Peace that literally lasts like four and a half hours or something like that. If you don't want to read War and Peace, watch their video. It's going to give you a, not a brief explanation, but it's going to give you a summary. That's for sure. It felt long at some points, but overall, S tier, man. 
like you cannot say that this book is anything other than S tier. It's not A, B, C, D. Notes from the Underground is about this depressed, nihilistic, lethargic general or officer, I don't specifically remember, but it's about this man who's living such a parasitic lifestyle. He becomes a laughing stock because all he does is that he thinks. Every single day, he writes and he thinks and he reads books. I mean, the way this book starts just tells you everything. I am a sick man. I am an unattractive man. I am a spiteful man. I think my liver is diseased. I'm not sure if my liver is actually diseased. And this is the <laughs> this is the final tier list. I need to read more books, clearly. A year from now, I'm gonna try to recreate this exact video. I'm gonna read all of these books, at least I'm going to try. In a year from now, I'll be able to do these books justice. And if you've actually enjoyed this video, I would highly appreciate some feedback. And to be honest, I'm sorry that I haven't read more of these, but hopefully in a year from now, I'll be able to re-rank these books. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, see you at the top.